Hey, Hal, tell us about your setup here. I know you got a great uh, simulator setup. Give us the give us the rundown. Sure. Uh, first off, the reason that uh, we built a, simul a simulator is uh, both Jeff and I are going for our private pilot license. And we believe that using a simulator, we'll be able to shorten the amount of time that it takes in the air to get our license. We'll be able to practice air traffic control communications through Pilot Edge. We'll be able to have uh, remote CFIs using Skype. And just in general, get used to the controls of the plane, even if it's not 100% realistic. So uh, I believe that, uh, especially shared amongst two people, that this will more than pay for itself. So first off, I um, wanted to mention that the original plan was to uh, use a single monitor screen and to be able to change view angles using a track IR uh, headset device that allows you to move your head and look left and right. But the more uh, I thought about it, the more I felt like a three screen setup would be superior and actually not that much more expensive. So um, there's a companion uh, instruction manual that goes along with this YouTube video which has all of the components and all the prices. But what you'll see is that by going from one monitor to three monitors, it only increased the total cost of the simulator by 12%. So um, three screen setup, and we decided to change the screens from originally a 45 degree angle of these screens with respect to the main monitor, the center monitor, and go for a 65 degree angle to get a more of a wraparound uh, view. And I think and that's uh, superior because it gives you ability to look out the left and right windows and actually see the uh, airport and the runways for doing pattern work. It also impro improves the uh, realism, I think, of the simulator. Now the other part of the simulator is this touch screen, which is essential to the training piece of it because this touch screen really works like um, Garmin 1000 uh, PFD and MFDs. And the way that works is that now that you can touch to get different um, access to the different controls of the touch screen, but actually since so many of these uh, in the Garmin are knobs, we have a device called Knobster which actually allows you to uh, manipulate those knobs. It's got an outer knob and an inner knob and a push part of a knob. So like I can push this and now I get, uh, I can pan up or down as well as increase and decrease the uh, range of the uh, GPS here. And all of the other uh, things you can touch too. So the touch screen is, a, I think, an essential part. It also allows you to really understand the uh, how to manipulate the Garmin devices. Or even if you're doing a six-pack, it allows you to be able to make adjustments, say, to the barometric pressure on the ground, just like you would in the real uh, plane. And what, what, uh, what's the size of that display, Hal, and what brand is it? Yeah, that's a 21 and a half inch touch screen. It's an Acer. And these are 43 inch uh, monitor screens. Um, so to, um, oh, one other thing is that their primary aircraft is the Cessna 172. It's a very common aircraft to learn in. And one of the reasons that we're using the Cessna 172 is there's a very good reality expansion pack, which you'll see in the uh, a companion document, uh, which explains every single component, both software and hardware. But this reality expansion pack gives you better stall characteristics so that this device, uh, this particular plane, feels very realistic. So on to other input devices. The most important input device is your yoke. And this is a honeycomb yoke. And um, this is recent to the marketplace. 
and it's really up the game because the price is quite low for a yoke of this high quality. In addition, you get a lot of the buttons and switches that you would need, for example, for the Cessna, and you don't have to buy those as extra devices, which otherwise you would have to pay for. So this yoke really provides a lot of the functionality. Here is a um, Logitech throttle quadrant, and I think it was a SciTech before Logitech bought it, uh, and that works well. It actually has some buttons that we've been reassigning for things like uh, parking brake, and we've used this one for the uh, landing gear up and down. And then here we have the flaps, so you can adjust your flaps up and down, and also a trim wheel which is really important because a trim wheel you're going to be using all the time when you're flying. Tell us about the pedals, Hal. Ah, yeah, the pedals. Um, these are MFG pedals, and the workmanship on these devices, uh, this device, I think, is really excellent. So, you know, it really feels solid. Um, you push down your toes to do the braking, and you can adjust the... Uh, action of these the forces on these using cams there's different cams for different aircraft and then you using a spring controls you can adjust the force required to do these as well as the force required to uh, depress the brakes so it's very uh, customizable and tell us about the heart of the beast the computer system hell sure um this uh, computer is a power spec computer I think it's a G434, but I'm not sure of the exact number. Um, it was purchased at a local computer store called Micro Center around here in Minnesota. And it's using the uh, GeForce GTX 2070 graphics card. So it's a fairly powerful computer. It is not top end of the line, but um, it's quite affordable, we found. And what's it got for outputs there? for the Ah, uh, yeah. So there's four video outputs on the graphics card. There's three display ports and one HDMI. Now it turns out that all of these monitors only have HDMIs so that we had to use a uh, display port to HDMI converter cables on each one of those. Uh, however, the monitor we have directly connected, uh, the touchscreen monitor, we have directly connected via HDMI. Now, um, we built a bench here. You can see this black painted bench. And in the instruction manual, you'll see um, our you know, book pictures of every step of the way as this was built. Plus, there is a, uh, uh, a uh, graphic that shows you the dimensions of this particular bench. We additionally added this keyboard tray and a keyboard and a mouse, or in this case, it's a, a trackball, which is my preferred input device. Uh, these are necessary evils when you're uh, doing any kind of uh, flight simulator, trying to upgrade your software, uh, obviously. And it's nice to have a keyboard tray that we can just swing out of the way when we use a pilot, you know, co-pilot pilot situation. But here you can swing it out when you have to do keyboard work yeah and i'll i'll add to that that uh the dimensions of the of the setup here were taken right from the cockpit of a piper archer so that's another plane that we train on so we got that distance to the pedals the height of the yoke off the floor and we did our best to get the uh, quadrant in a pretty good position that's very similar to the aircraft itself and then look at how we've positioned the the touch screen such that when you're seated it just blocks the view of the the, the instruments that come in the with the X plane, so it's a perfect alignment. You can see your call sign here just off to the side when you're sitting right in front of the yoke, and so that was pretty good. And we got this little swing arm back here for mounting it, just to get it just right. And Jeff, um, why don't you explain? like the construction of the bench and then also the mounting of the monitors. Yeah, this is just uh, like uh, half inch plywood um, that we used. It was makes it real solid. 
we actually mounted it to the wall back there, but you don't actually have to do that, but we just wanted it to be real solid. And then the monitors are mounted on these swing arms, uh, which we found on Amazon. We had to extend them just a little bit, uh, but as you can see, it makes for a nice uh, way to, you can actually collapse the system if you need to use the workbench or the <laughs> room for other things. Um, I'll also add that it's really important to get your monitors aligned properly so that the scenery will uh, seamlessly move across the screens. You can't, uh, you can't do without the bezel or the edging of these monitors, but you can see they're quite thin. You can see the alignment is just about perfect here with the, with the cowling there. And the um, mounts that are mounting the side monitors have a lot of adjustment. You can adjust the angle uh, both forward and backward and side to side. And then by changing the arm, uh, bending the arm in the center there, you can adjust the amount of distance that the uh, monitor is out from the wall. Then we added the black scrim to kind of add even additional uh, reality to the whole thing so that when the lights are off, which we can demonstrate now, perhaps, you'll see that it looks very real. So, Jeff, you want to just unpause that and uh, show this sure. baby in action? Okay. Bring up the seat. And we're in Seattle. You can see the uh, Space Needle here. Just buzzed by the space needle. We've got just a little bit of turbulence turned on so that it, it really acts like the real thing. In downtown Seattle over to the right there. We were flying really slow so we could just kind of buzz the space needle. So that's about it. Um, Oh, by the way, I did want to give a call out. Uh, we had a lot of help from a uh, person uh, that resides in Guam. He's a fellow flight simulator enthusiast. I would say that uh, I got maybe 40 hours of help building this thing, and it was invaluable. I don't think we ever would have gotten this far without assistance. And I think that's just the kind of the pilot community is very good at providing assistance to others. And I wanted to make sure that uh, he was acknowledged. He doesn't want his name used, wants to remain in the background, but he did say, ask me to pay it forward. And this is my way of paying it forward to other people who might want to build their own flight simulator. And I'm calling it the Guam Flight Simulator. Well, thanks for the introduction, Hal. I'm sure everybody will appreciate all the work you did to put this together. All right. Sayonara.